Being a successful entrepreneur is really desire. You know, and some people like Normie said, what's the burning desire? Just the way you go after it. If you, if you got a dream and a vision, and you wake up, and you go at it lackadaisically, look at it today, look at it tomorrow, you ain't got no burning desire. So really a burning desire is you thinking about it every night, you wake up with it, you know what I mean? And then you get to a point, if you get to the point where you say, you know what, I'm gonna do this or die, then you're ready. Right. Then you're really ready because you really wanna, before you go out there, it's like spiritual Novocaine. It's like being numb first because when you go out there and God numb you real good and then when the challenges and the bruises and the disappointments come, because some people can't handle the rejection you know what I mean right, right. they just can't handle the rejection somebody saying no I don't like you go away so what, what you do in those, in those situations basically here's what I do I know that most people don't understand opportunity, or they looking for opportunity. And they can't find it when it come because they think opportunity come on a white horse, you know, everything's perfect, you know what I mean? And it's just the way you want it, but most of the time, the best opportunity come in setbacks and disappointments. That's when the opportunity arises. just like now, you got the the stimulus package going on, ain't no money, the economy's bad. This is the best time to go in business. Because guess what? If you can build your business right now, you're recession proof, literally. If anything happens to the top, you feel what I'm saying? So it's real good to, to start when things are bad. Right. My worst, let me tell you something, my best shows and my best ideas came when I was down and out. I was jacked up, ain't had no money, and it made me think. It made me be creative. So these are the best times, man, when you ain't ready, when you ain't got enough money, and you put all excuses, you know, right. aside, and you just start. That's good. That's good. You know what I mean? You just start, man. And I and I believe, and it's like in the Bible said, if you be faithful over few, he'll make you rule over many. Right. So don't despise small beginnings. Everything started small. Okay. About the dressing game and what you do about the business and why you got to look the part. The thing is, is, is uh, my philosophy in the company is um, people see what you are before they hear what you are. The psychology of clothing. So really, perception is everything. The way people perceive you. I could be walking down the street and a guy uh, size me up before I open my mouth. That's just the way it is. Even the right. Bible said, man look on the outward appearance. God look at the heart. Ain't nobody, no genie gonna read my heart, tell me what I'm thinking, or where I'm going, or how I feel. All they can do is look at my clothing. Right. And my hair cut, and, and, and get a perception. Right. But that perception might be right. So, so when brothers are debating between the regular, the, the traditional tie, the ascot, the bow tie, tell us a little bit about the differences. See, the thing is, we got something in our company. We, we call the bow tie the pastor, and we call the ascot the bishop. Everybody want to be the bishop. <laughs> so just like in fashions, after you've done a tie, what's next? Right. Then a the guy say, let me drop a bow tie. And after you've done a bow tie, what's next? You gotta drop an ascot. So yeah. it's so it's like it's in you to increase. And so the thing is, people say I'm conservative. I don't know if I'm gonna wear that. I don't know. It's just because they just limiting that. So uh, when you when you when you talk about the tie, you gotta you gotta have a part from the full onslaught from the top to the bottom. But you say you like to specific to be specific in your business. Tell us about that. See. Here's what I like, man. See, nothing comes dynamic till it comes specific. You got to be specific, man, about anything you're doing. It's like, it's like, if you was to take a, um, what's those things that that, that you that you sifter? No, it, that you can have a piece of paper and take the sun and you can, and it go right through. Magnifying. Magnifying, right, right. If you would take a magnifying glass and the sun, and you had a piece of paper and you put it over top of the paper and kept moving it, 
mm -hmm. it wouldn't burn at all. Right. But if you hold this steel and the sun hit, it's going to burn. Why? Because the focus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. See, That's faith true. need a target. You and so we say is your target is your base. Find out who you are, what you want to do. It's like you say, God, bless me with a house. You're going to like, all right, I'll give you a bird house. Right. You ain't any specific. You're like, what kind of house? How many bedrooms you want? You want a bathroom? You want a sink? So you got to be detailed, just like if you was to build a house. You got to see the end from the beginning. You mm. already see the end. Right. Right? You can't build a house unless you see the end. The plan is already done. So this same way in your business, you got to find your base. You got to find something that you can love, that you can do. And then once you do that, like for instance, scenario, I'm a fashion designer. I was just talking to you about that. Somebody say, listen, Mauricio, I want to get in fashions, man. I always loved it. I want to do this. Say, okay, great. All right. First thing to do, sell something that's already out there that's making money. You try that. Now, if you go out there and you can't sell what's already in existence, you need to look at yourself again. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need to check yourself out. And a lot of people blame the economy. They blame people. They blame people are cheap. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And it's really you. Every time something happens, you got to look inside of you and see what you're doing wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe your price point is too high. You know what I mean? Maybe you don't have a good vision. You know what I mean? Maybe you need to adopt somebody else's vision and then add to it as you go along. So it's good to go out there and try to sell something that's already established first so you can feel the bumps and the pain and bruise that get tweaked. You know what I mean? Right. Bounce off ideas with another entrepreneur that might be at the same your idea and you can add to what you're already doing. Right? Right. And then the glory of that is when you create an idea and you put it on paper or you put it on a t shirt or you put it on a tie and it sells, man, that joy you get, you know what I mean? It's unexplainable. Right. You know what I mean? It's unexplainable. How, how long you been doing this? I've been, matter of fact, I've been in fashions about 25 years. I started in the trunk of my car with $200. I couldn't pay my rent. I say, hey, I'm gonna get put out, so I might as well go in business, right? <laughs> but that's how I really started. Okay. I said, listen, I love fashions. I'm gonna take this two hundred dollars. Either I'm gonna do this and die, or I'm gonna do it and win. And I said, I'm gonna do it and win. And I ain't said it was easy, but it's worth it. Right. You know, it, it, it is worth it. And I, and I'm telling you, when you take this and you go after your dream. Man, you gonna want to quit a thousand times, mm -hmm. but that's a good thing. That's supposed to happen, right? So if you can accept rejection, if you can accept disappointments, and you can say, you know what, failure is good. I can learn from failure. I was going left, failure told me go right. You know what I mean? Right. I was down, I got back up. So you just gotta love failure because there's a lot of good things in failure that you learn. You know what I mean? Like a chemist, if you was a chemist and you left your office, you want to come back and hear that your students was failing mm -hmm. trying to discover a cure. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I want to know how many times that you failed the wrong way. You feel what I'm saying? Because I know if you failed a hundred times, that 101 way, I do it again a different way, might be the right way.